today we will talk about the famous last supper painting of uh, jesus and his disciples right obviously and um the picture of the so-called jesus himself don't mind me using that word so-called jesus because there's a lot of rumors around a lot of sayings that there are iotas of truth in it like i say nothing just come out of nowhere there are reasons why things are said there are reasons why things are done. Don't just think that things happen in this life or things happen to you just coincidentally. Everything has been ordained to be. Everything has been planned to be and it happens the way the Creator wants it to happen. Alright, um, let's dive right into it because the effect of the brainwashing that we talk about the supremacist plan. I think from if you've not watched other videos maybe you're missing just try go back and check out some of the videos we talk about the supremacist idea and the agenda sorry now you know the the the, the main aim of the supremacist is control in 1482 leonardo da vinci was commissioned to paint a significant work of art that depicted jesus christ and his 12 apostles this painting would later become known as the last supper this was a time when the world was a vastly different place. This painting has had a brainwashing impact on the world and become a significant tool used in colonialism till this day. In fact, many black people around the world continue to hold on to the original painting of The Last Supper. History unveiled that Leonardo da Vinci used his uncle to pose as Jesus Christ. Twelve criminals from a local jail were used as models for the Twelve Apostles. This decision to use criminals as models is not uncommon in art history. The image of the Last Supper became a tool used by colonial powers to assert their dominance over the people they sought to conquer and control. The whole world is run on bluff. No race, no nation, no man has any divine right to take advantage of others. The first officially documented painting of a Jesus the Christ was done in 1492 under pope alexander the sixth also called rodrigo bush his illegitimate son cesar bougia was having a sexual affair with the renaissance artist named leonardo da vinci leonardo da vinci was the one who painted the mona lisa and the last supper he was working closely with the catholic church the roman catholic church to achieve white supremacy leonardo da vinci being a painter painted image of his lover Cesar Bougia. Now this image was the image that the Catholic Church endorsed as an upon to be the official painting, the official image of Jesus Christ. In other words, in our parents' houses, many of them have the image, the picture of a homosexual who claim to be the image of Jesus Christ. I think I keep saying this here on this channel that um, a lot of things you know to be true are lies. And by day, the Creator keep giving us evidences. By day, the Creator keep giving us answers both in everything that we do but most of the times we tend not to listen because we are so much um preoccupied with all this we are preoccupied with things we shouldn't preoccupy our minds and our souls with you know we corrupt them with most of these things you know there are there are some rituals that even if you are not involved in it but for the fact that you believe in something that was used for the ritual there is this tie that they've tied you to then it's like you partaking in the ritual so the energy around you will be energy that is polluted energy that is that is not of the creator energy that is not of divinity and that is exactly what they do to everybody they try to tie us into something so that we don't even reason anymore it's not your fault it's not your fault that you are not getting it it's not your fault that you will not try even when you try sometimes maybe you need to put more effort anyway it's not your fault that 
you feel the way you feel or you 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 you, you know understand things in life the way you do it's the way they want the way they position their mind through the things they created and they make it so available to everybody to have it now when we're talking about the painting of a holy picture the story surrounding leonardo da vinci his uncle the one he painted right and then um, the father of this same man right that his father should be he was later pope alexander the sixth now i'm gonna leave some right up here it's so i can't say with my mouth because it's so appalling like it's so i don't know i'm gonna leave it here so you read it yourself try to read that now the story around this set of people it's not a story that morally is okay moral moral wise the stories surrounding these people are not okay because there is no moral teaching surrounding the life of these people just imagine what the father of the man he painted does to his children just imagine the life he lived and now for the fact that this same person is said to be his lover and when you look at this picture look at this picture right now i'm going to put that back so you keep reading but look at this one right now just look at it there is this femininity and masculinity in it i don't know if i'm saying the right thing but just look at it like is it a woman is it a man just look at the chest right and then just look at the eyes look at the eyes you know most of the time when we're little when we see these pictures like we see pictures of jesus I would be like, oh, he's so handsome, he's so beautiful. You don't even know what to say. Is he handsome? Is he beautiful? You don't know what to say. But there is this, it's there, it's embedded in this picture. And these pictures and the likes, that of the Last Supper as well, there are a lot of hidden codes. There are codes hidden in those pictures that we see we have them in our houses. Now, you can't just tell my mother, you can't just tell my mother that, the picture of the Jesus she had been knowing, she had been praying to, she had been kissing and holding so dear to her heart is a picture of a homosexual. She she might tell you that <laughs> you're treading a path that is not right. And that goes to a lot of us out there and a lot of our relatives and friends. It is now difficult to accept the fact that, you know, I saw a clip where someone was in the square like a market square square and he was asking people where he dropped a picture of three persons the picture of uh, marcus garvey the picture of this jesus the so-called jesus and then the picture of um, one other pan-africanist and he was asking them like when you when you are asked to pick or when you are asked you not know, to select which one are you going to go for like they said they were going to go for the picture of the so-called Jesus that they don't even know he was a homosexual. He was. You get that. This is a level. I tell you, the manipulation, the brainwashing was so much. And at the end of the, the first clip, there was something that this man said. He said, no man or nation or race has any right to take advantage of others. To brainwash others. There is no right whatsoever. Now tell me, if this practices to tell you that something is wrong with all these things they've agreed to do the truth they, 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 they decided to mix everything we are all confused we are all confused we don't even know what to believe because they did it so perfectly like so well they got us so hard sweetheart the world is more than what we see on daily basis around us the world is more spiritual than we think of and they know these things the supremacists know this thing they know there are vibration everywhere if you want to know what is right and what is wrong you will know but you need to allow align yourself your body yours everything within you need to be in compulsion with whatever you're going to discover so that you're going to get out you're going to be free from this bond we it's like we are all living in bondage they keep tying us down to a particular thing they keep using 
particular doctrines which they sat down and make it a doctrine. They just come out, deliberate on something and make it a doctrine until everybody had to believe in it. Yes, this is a dogma. We have to accept it. You don't have to question. It's the Holy Spirit that inspired them. That Holy Spirit that inspired them, is it only... I don't get it. The Spirit inspires all of us. So why is it that when I say my, you say it's the light, it's the devil. And then when you say yours, you want me to believe it wholeheartedly without asking questions. When I say my, you can scrutinize it. So when you say yours, I should scrutinize yours. Because we shouldn't be living like people that don't, that don't feel the vibration, the energy around us. And we are all embodiment of this. We, we attract this vibration and energy. Now, what kind of vibration do you attract as a person? What kind of energy do you attract? That tells, that explains how your life is going. If you They've taken advantage of us and they have no right whatsoever. They have no right whatsoever to go pick somebody and sat the person down and draw the person and tell us that this is Jesus. This is Yeshua. They don't have that right. Who are they? But because they've seen themselves as gods and then they told us that we shouldn't ask question whatever it is that God has revealed. They made us believe that God can only reveal things to them, but God can't reveal things to us. When they have forgotten that they told us that we are all made in God's image and likeness. So if I am made in God's image, you are made in God's image. If God can show you things, then God can show me at us as well. They make you feel that you have no power. They make you feel that you are nothing. And then you tell yourself, I have no power. So you surround yourself with that vibration of incapability. No, I can't do it. No, I'm not up to this. No, I can't do that. When you can do everything you lay your mind in, you just need to align yourself. And everything will be open to you. Sweetheart, there is a stage you'll be in life that when somebody is lying to you, you will figure it out. I'm telling you this. this these are the things that happened to me. Bef before I went to the convent, before I went to the convent, there was something I had and I lost when I went to the convent. I'm going to share. The... Anyway, before I went to the convent, to the point that even my mother, there was a time my mother called me and was like, am I the child she gave birth to? Like, when you come into me, I cannot perceive what you want to say to me before you come. And that has happened to about two or three persons that they've asked me questions like, how do you knew that I was coming to say this? And then it was like, it was becoming a bit obvious and I tried to like, even when I know what you want to say, I allow you to say it first because at first I was, I was so, you know, anxious and so eager. So whenever I, I, it just comes to me and like, okay, this is what you want to say. All this was there to tell you that when you start tying yourself to some of these lies, you keep remaining in the lies. I, 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 I fell out of touch when I went to the convents. All this I'm telling you, I, I never felt, I wasn't feeling it again. It started going. Those gifts started going. It's like I became so empty. I became empty like I was looking for something that I can't find. That's why I keep telling you that there is nothing you look for that is outside. It's already in you. It's in you. Now, Thinking that going to the convent and becoming a sister will make me live a more holier life and I'll become more spiritual was a lie. Because I went to the convent and I was empty. It was like I was searching for something. And that thing, all this why was in me. It is later, when I left, that I started gradually trying to go back to who I was. To tell you that what you believe in has a lot of effect. In the kind of energy and vibration that surrounds you. They want us to keep believing in these things. So that they can tie us in the foolishness they want us to keep living in. So that they can suppress our spiritual capability. Because we all have spiritual capabilities. They want to tie us down. So we don't have that power anymore. What more do you want to hear? And another person will be out there saying, no, it's not true. It's not true. What is this person saying? It's not true. <sighs> My people. 
anyway leave your comment and thought the other section and i'll see you in my next one what do you think about this so-called picture of portrait of jesus by the um, leonardo da vinci and then the last supper leonardo da vinci and uh, and i'll see you in my next one until then love yourself love others stay safe stay positive bye for now